let him look good. He said, but tonight we're going to play it straight. Well, Bill Pollock watched our tape, too, and he said, I realized why wrestler scored so much after you said nobody was guarding him. <laughs> and he did certainly come up with 22 points. Jimmy Stauffer comes up with, I think, 14 points in the ball game. So for the first time ever in the year, Salisbury gets high scores other than Faust and Hubbard. Let's talk a little bit about Southern Lehigh as they come in. They're a team that played on Saturday night. Does that hurt them, first of all, that they had to go Thursday, Saturday, and now again Monday? No, that helped them. It helped them immensely, Gary. I'll tell you why. Number one, you got one more game under your belt. It's like a scrimmage, but it counts as a game, and you played here. Mm -hmm. So you're not walking onto a strange, you know, to a strange court, totally strange. Uh, if, there are any are, if there are any idiosyncrasies about the gymnasium itself, you've had the chance to iron them out and in a winning effort. So it's a big plus having played here. All right, let's take a look at the Southern Lehigh starters. And as we did mention on Thursday night, these are guys that all score about the same, but they did have trouble scoring on Thursday night, uh, particularly in the paint area. Eight to ten feet away, they couldn't put the ball in the basket. Still trying to figure that one out, Gary. Was it the emotionalism of playing for the first half championship? Was it the fact, you know, that they were undefeated in their league? What was it? Because the first move, the first step, the good drive was all there. But then when they hit that black, it was the, the backing, it was like a vibration. You know, they were shooting so hard coming off. They seem to have gotten just about anything they wanted. In fact, almost to the point that Bill just might be changing up a little bit more tonight on defense. They did seem to be just a little bit too emotionally high coming into the ball game, and they really were not shooting the ball very well. It was a hard shot. One thing they did do well, they did stop Faust and Hubbard pretty well. If they do that again tonight, is there somebody there for Salisbury to pick up that slack again? Oh, sure. I'll tell you, see, uh, I thought Hubbard and Faust were probably more sensational than they were all, were all year for one reason. You got them to play other aspects of the game and excel at it. The passing, the penetrating, the dishing, the ball control, the things that you would normally expect of your guard. Hey, let somebody else pick up the scoring load. And he got, I guess Hubbard had only nine shots. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Win the game by that much without having to go to your bomber, so to speak. I, I just thought it was a great plus for those two kids. Well, we'll take a look at the other three kids in the Salisbury starters right after we take time out for this message. The holidays may be gone, but there's one package being held over just for you. The Money Store Prime Package with fixed-rate home equity loans as low as prime. We're extending our holiday offer for a limited time only to help homeowners pay off credit card bills, make home improvements, anything at all. Trust the Money Store to give homeowners a prime package when they need it most. Call right now. 1-800-LOAN-YES. Program may be canceled without notice. We are back. As we mentioned Thursday night, Salisbury won that basketball game. They won it rather handily, 66 to 52. They won it because I thought that particular night, Salisbury played some pretty good team defense, too. I thought they played well at the defensive end of the floor. Absolutely. If there were two keys, it's to get the total game out of the two we mentioned, Faust and Hubbard, and at the same time, to play some great, great defense. Now, the one thing I'm, I'm looking to see, Gary, is will there be any work or any improvement in both area pressure games? Because if you remember, pressure truly, I'm talking about full court pressure, did not play a part at all in anyone's game. Now, do you go? Because that's usually a tool you go to if you're down or if you're even or something like that. And I'm wondering just how much either one of these teams could rely on a pressure well, game. Certainly, Southern Lehigh could not pressure Faust. He brought the ball up by himself. Let's take a look at the Salisbury starters. And as you'll see, uh, Ian Ressler is in there tonight after scoring 22 points. Bill Pollock's quote is, I'd be kind of stupid not to start him. Absolutely. Good, good call, Bill. <laughs> That's exactly right. And the other guys we mentioned, Faust and Hubbard, are the leading scorers. Hubbard, in fact, the leading scorer in the league right now. Mike Stauffer had a great game, uh, 14 points, and he set almost half of that game. And Paul Rodenberger may be the sleeper tonight. Well, that's right. It could be his turn. You know, you're talking about one of the non-high scorers to come to the four. Hey, it was wrestler. It was wrestler the other night. So tonight, who knows? Could be old. You know, it could be somebody who you really wouldn't count on for the big, big offensive game. And both these teams, as they proved on Thursday night, have very good benches. They can go three and four deep, and they really don't change their pattern very much. Tonight is for all the marbles. Southern Lehigh in the same situation they were in Thursday. Win the night, they have the championship. They weren't able to do it Thursday night. Let's see if they can do it tonight. Southern Lehigh against Salisbury. We'll have tip-off for you right after this timeout.
for my mom going to Walter's Pharmacy. Now I go. Walter's fills my prescription needs quickly, and I pay my Bell of PA and UGI bills. When I can't get away, Walter's comes to me with free delivery. Walter's Pharmacy, making life easier through genuine care since 1937. Walter's Pharmacy, 401 North 17th Street in the Allentown Medical Center. Welcome back to the Seward's Phys Ed Center. Uh, Gary Laubach along with Dick Tracy. And we're happy to be here tonight. We will have the introductions of the starting lineups by Pumpkin Miller at this time. It'll be the Southern Lehigh Spartans who will be introduced first. Number 12 is Brett Sachs, a 5'11 senior. All these guys are right up around that 10 point per game mark. They have good balance scoring. 20 is Brian Boomer Snyder. He's a 5'9 senior. Number 14 is Mike Yerkes. He's a 5'9 senior. These guys are kind of clones of each other. 42 is Jason Mack, a 6'2 senior. And 52, Rob Hamilton, hurt early in the season. Rob is back, and he is a 6'4 junior. Southern Lehigh coached by Bob Schaefer. They are 14 and 3 on the year, and they had a 7 and 1 record in the first half of the Colonial League. Their only loss was the Salisbury. On the Salisbury side, Antoine Hubbard is out, a 5'11 sophomore. He wears number 23, 22.4 a game. Creighton Faust was already introduced, number 20, a 5'10 senior, 14 points a ball game. Mike Stauffer is 24, a 5'10 senior, 5.2 points a ball game. Ian Ressler, number 14, a 6'3 junior, 4 points a ball game and 32. Paul Rodenberger, a 5'10 senior, 10 points a ball game. Salisbury coached by Bill Pollock. He's in his 28th season as the head coach at Salisbury. They are 13 and 2 on the year, 7 and 1 in the first half. Of course, their only loss came to Saucon Valley in a ball game that we had for you. Bob Schaefer in his third year at Southern Lehigh. You look at the officials tonight, there will not be three working the game. Sam Eric and Gary Spangler will be on the floor. And Jim Butler will be sitting at the uh, scorer's table to make sure that everything is kind of hunky-dory. And Dick Tracy, you sort of feel, I think, that Southern Lehigh might have the advantage. they got a little bit of a revenge factor, and they've played here before. Well, so, yeah, I want to finish that, Gary. So did uh, Bill. Bill scrimmage John Dunmore here, you know, which obviously didn't have as many aspects of the game, but I'm sure it lasted a lot longer. <laughs> All right, we'll have tip-off. A good crowd here tonight, one would think, in the vicinity of maybe 1,200 people in this beautiful facility. And here we go. It's the Colonial League Championship on the line, and it starts out in the hands of Antoine Hubbard. He shows us a few fancy moves already, and he makes sure that he puts the uh, nylon down as he drops it right through. Right back down the other end of the floor, Rob Hamilton drops the ball off. Jason Mack back down, and Hamilton decides to go up over top of everybody. And just like that, Dick, things have changed from the last ball game. Hubbard scores, Hamilton scores. Yeah, and both scores are in the paint, Gary. So are we saying that they're going to go at somebody and get someone in foul trouble? Well, we get a quick 10-foot jump shot that won't fall for Salisbury. That shot taken by Rodenberger. Man to man by the Falcons. You'll see man to man at the other end of the floor by the Spartan. Down inside to Yerkes. Yerkes tries to go baseline. Hubbard won't allow that. And back outside. Mack will look things over. They showed us a real good man to man offense on Thursday night. That jump shot by Boomer Snyder. He is the leading scorer on the team. He's close to about 11 points the ball game. He drilled that one. And he's also the. The best perimeter shooter on the team, too, Gary. He's a blue collar kind of basketball player, Dick. Got the short haircut, the black sneakers. He's one of the, he'd make like the Madden team in basketball. Antoine Hubbard drops it off smartly. Rodenberger can't get it to fall. Rebound, no bots. Out of bounds. Salisbury has the basketball. Well, uh, one of the things certainly that we noticed right away, Gary, both teams man to man. Uh, Salisbury will be pressured. And if has, they have to pressure, they'll come back 1-1-2-1 one, one, one themselves. They do play a zone on the out-of-bounds play. They're in a 2-3. Rodenberger has the basketball. Wrestler is inside, playing the center position, as much as Salisbury has a center on their offense. Stauffer, his first shot of the night, drills it. Tied at four. 
And there's the Salisbury pressure. I don't know whether that was Brett Sachs' imitation of Marcus Haynes or what, but he managed to hang on to the basketball. Yarkis down the lane, drops it off nicely. Hamilton gets nothing but backboard. Stauffer with a rebound. And I hope that hard shot off the glass doesn't make him think back to Thursday, Gary. Hubbard way outside, doesn't go. Rebound controlled inside, a nice pass up the floor by Sachs. Oh, he's got something, it's offensive. Foul on Jason Mack. Boy, he saw that one coming. Well, one thing has changed, Dick. It took two minutes and 30 seconds for our so, first foul. Watch it here. another look. First of all, watch the pass. Nice outlet. You like that pass? I like to watch it. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> you were sitting down there on the floor, you wouldn't have liked that pass. That jump shot won't go. We've got a foul on a wrestler. Yeah, and one of the other things we notice immediately, Gary, wrestler is being guarded this evening and being blocked out well, that time by Hamilton, causing him to go over to the top and pick up his first. Yeah, I'm sure Bobby Schaefer, fool me once, all right, fool me twice, and I'm an idiot, and uh, Bobby certainly is not that, and he has found wrestler on the floor tonight. 4-4 is the score with the 5-10 mark first period. These two teams kind of feeling each other out here offensively. Snyder to Sachs, down inside to Yerkes. Yerkes off the glass. And that's the big one, the inside guards. They make a penetration move, Gareth. Sneak around a little bit like the flex, sneak around under the, the screen underneath, and set themselves low, and they were just banging it so hard off the glass. That one finessed its way in. They got a lot of that kind of position on Thursday night, and couldn't make the shot. Wrestler has it knocked away. Good defense that time by Hamilton, or Mack it was. Boy, that time he had two men, two men around uh, Wrestler. He really knows what it's like to be guarded tonight. Yeah, you, you score 22, you draw a crowd. Jason Mack, yes. Boy, if they can get some pro productivity out of Mack from the perimeter, they'll really be in good shape. Well, he told you they had balanced scoring. Four of the five starters have scored the eight points. There's a nice move by Rodenberger. Nobody has more than one basket. It's 8-6. Brett Sachs just walking it up the floor. Sachs for the alley-oop. He's got the basketball, but he has the ball slapped out of bounds by Faust. Southern Lehigh's going to have to alter their pressure, guys. It really hasn't bothered uh, Salisbury at all. One, either Creighton Faust dribbles right through it, or two, they pass over the top of it. And it certainly does hurt you if Faust goes by somebody. It, all, it does produce a five-on-four type situation. And now Boomer Snyder will set things up and get everybody where he wants them. Watch the little screens. They set down low on the block. That's the flex. There's the cross now. Mack to Snyder, but he stepped out of bounds. So the shot does not count. 8-6. Salisbury can tie it here. 3.35 to go. Much more under control game oh. than we had Thursday, where people were so emotionally high, they were just hammering each other. Creighton foul. I mean, yeah, Creighton fouls. That's Antoine Hubbard. Not hard to tell those guys apart. Hubbard down the lane, and he hit the back of the iron. Well, to go back to your statement, Gary, about control, uh, the site has an awful lot to do with that. You know, uh, Southern Lehigh isn't sweating being away from home, and Salisbury not so emotionally involved being at home. Good defensive play by Stauffer that time to block the shot. And we'll stay at 8-6. Salisbury's third opportunity to tie the score. Stauffer having trouble, hounded by Snyder. This is Hubbard. Hubbard guarded by Yerkes. And now Hubbard will set things up. Stauffer will come off the pick. Rodenberger. Very patient offense by both teams tonight. If the patience stays, Gary, that would be to Southern Lehigh's advantage. Dick, is this a Colonial League game? <laughs> Looks like an East Penn Conference basketball game. Colonial League a little more wide open, and we're not seeing that kind of play here. You know what they may be doing is trying to get the ball to Faust, because he really hasn't been involved in the offense so far. And I'll tell you, he's a leader. He's their court leader, no doubt about that. He and Wrestler over the top, and he gets his first bucket of the night. You know what? That's an extremely big bucket for Wrestler, and not on the scoreboard. That's a personal bucket. 
shows that he still can play and does belong with that first unit. And he made a nice move to get the basket. The only one who hasn't scored is Faust. Coming across the lane, we're going to get our first foul shot of the night. I believe it's going to be called on Hubbard. We'll see what Sam Merritt says. Two, three. That is Antoine Hubbard, his first. Second team foul, but it'll be our first trip to the 15-foot stripe, and it'll be by Mike Yerkes. I feel a little bit like you, Gary. It seems like you're just waiting for somebody to open this thing up. Yeah, this is not the tempo we had Thursday night. The ball game in which a... 118 points were scored. First foul missed by Yerkes. All of a sudden, Southern Lehigh can't get off that eight. There they do it. But Yerkes becomes the first player on the floor to get three points. Or anything more than two. Minute and 44 seconds to go. Antoine trying to find a move down the lane. He has the ball slapped away. I believe by Boomer Snyder. No, it's not. It's going to be by Brett Sachs. You know, the funny thing about that is uh, you're playing good man-to-man -man yourself, then a little bit of help defense. Someone else gets by and draws the foul. Great Faust. How about his first two tonight? No. Rebound. Nobody has it. Snyder comes up with the ball. He gets rid of it. Sachs. Sachs all the way. Up and in. Beautiful stutter dribble, guys. He dribbled high almost as if he didn't have control and then just put it in first gear and away he went. Every Southern Lehigh starter has a bucket. Rodenberger, no. Rodenberger, follow. No. Out of bounds. It's going to be Southern Lehigh basketball off Stauffer. I think what you admire about the uh, Southern Lehigh team, Gary, is the not only are they balanced, but the, the players, the chess pieces out there know the, the, the part that they're going to play. Uh, Max just not expected to dribble it. Hamilton's just not expected to hold it. You got two guards, you got a perimeter shooter and Snyder. Hover that time. Commits the reach around foul, and that's his second. Coming into the ball game for Southern Lehigh is Chris Taylor, the six foot junior. Chris had eight big points in the, in the Stockton Valley game on Saturday night. We'll see Jim Coyle before too long, too. And Jimmy had nine points in that game. And Bobby Schaefer felt the 17 points from those two guys probably the most uh, important factor in the game. And they also played great against Salisbury, too, Gary. So, so they're, they're proven, uh, you know, proven substitutes. We said both teams have pretty strong benches. Salisbury, of course, can go to Scott Olt, who normally is a starter. The wrestler just moved him out of there with that great effort on Thursday. That time the ball is slapped away. Creighton Faust on the move. Creighton Faust against Snyder, and Faust has his first bucket. Every starter in the ball game has one field goal for both teams. The only difference, in fact, a Mike Yerkes foul shot makes it 11-10. Everybody else has scored one. Snyder, oh. Boomer drops one. It comes at the buzzer, and Southern Lehigh has themselves a 13-10 lead. We'll be right back. Make Whitehall Auto Parts the most important stop for your car. We're a major supplier of foreign and domestic auto and light truck parts and have one of the largest inventories in the Lehigh Valley. We also provide machine shop services and are equipped for complete engine rebuilding. Whitehall Auto Parts stands behind their products. Make your next stop at Whitehall Auto Parts, 2741 MacArthur Road in Whitehall. We're open weekdays 8 to 8, Saturday 8 to 4, and Sunday 9 to 4. Or phone 437-4604. Well, the excitement does not end our basketball coverage tonight. The excitement continues tomorrow night when we have Whitehall Central Catholic. Whitehall keeping pace with Phillipsburg at the top of that pack. Central coming off a heartbreaking loss to Easton in overtime at Rockney Hall on Friday night. Dick, that promises to be a pretty intense game. Yes, it does, Gary. And of course, now you're at the pivotal part of the year. You know, now you've just about put everything in what you, what you would want to. You, you're scheduled into a pattern. Your practices are becoming just a little bit shorter. Well, in most cases, they are for most teams. 
and and you know you're you're almost playing pattern basketball and saying I'm devoting a day and a half to an opponent, you know, and you're looking ahead and and and, and the thing that makes it nice for some of the coaches, it's opponents they've seen before, you know, so you can really study them and go to school on them. All right, let's give you some of the good news and bad news as far as Southern Lehigh is concerned in the first quarter. They're certainly up by three. The good news is they shot 75%. The bad news is when you shoot 75%, you should be winning by more than three. And the percentage can only go down. Rodenberger can't get it to fall. Salisbury shot 38% in the first quarter. That's the bad news. The good news is they're only down by three. So it kind of balances out on the ledger. You want to pick out an aspect, Gary, that, of the game that probably has been different is the fact that both teams are pretty well controlled at this point, and they haven't gone to the running game or that type of game to open up a score. Great block that time by Scott Olt, who is into the ball game for Salisbury. He reached out and just plucked the ball out of the air. So we have Hubbard down there, Rodenberger, Stauffer, Olt, and Faust for the white team, the Salisbury squad. It is Yerkes and Snyder and Sachs and Mack. Boomer Snyder with a three-point field goal. They say that most perimeter shooters feel it, Gary, and I'm sure Snyder feels it because there's no hesitation whatsoever. Chris Taylor has stayed in the game for Southern Lehigh. Gary Salisbury's standing around a little bit on offense. Uh, Faust is really the only one that's been cutting through regularly. The others are more spot playing. Southern Lehigh playing everybody tight, too, Dick. They did not do that the other night. Nice little turnaround shot by Scott Olt. So he gets on the board. 16-12. We're going to see Ebersole coming in. And, uh, boy, you know what I thought of him the other night, Gary. And he may ignite somewhere in that Salisbury lineup. That's Jamie Ebersall, 5'9", junior. That shot won't go. Rebound control by Rodenberger. There's the jumper. See, now that, that's Salisbury basketball. You know, the running jumper, uh, you know, two guys like Faust, who hit his second consecutive bucket. Uh, Hubbard comes through with a few of those. And then you're back into really a Salisbury tempo. The surprising thing is the ability of Southern Lehigh to keep the ball out of Hubbard's hands. Snyder again. Is it blocked? Yes, it is. Salisbury may be going to pressure here, Gary. Actually, they got three guards now in the lineup with Ebersole's addition. Rob Hamilton back in the ball game, as Dick mentioned, Ebersol in there. 16-14. Southern Lehigh has the ball. Nice little move. Up and in by Yerkes. I'll tell you, somebody missed a spot in that zone. That could happen because you had an outside man coming in for an inside man, which means somebody changes spots on the zone. They didn't change. He got an easy deuce off the inbounds. Dick, you mentioned the Salisbury offense standing around, and they are doing a lot of that. There was a lot more fluidity to their offense in the first four minutes of this game. Yeah, see what I mean? You've got to get moving on the offside. Uh, you, you know, you never know when you look at that. That's two in a row, though, from the wall that they picked up. Maybe the key to scoring for this team is to sit on the bench. <laughs> Holt started last game. Wrestler came in for him and scored a bundle. Holt sits on the bench this game, comes in and scores two in a row. I Foul's going to be called on Ebersol, I believe. I'll tell you what you might see, Gary, uh, with, with the addition of Ebersol, which would be a third guard in the Salisbury lineup, uh, you might see some of that run and jump. That is really coming back to prominence. Uh, double the ball on the side, use the sideline as a help, and then just play a passing lane with a third man. Just might see that out of the three guard setup. Fourth team foul committed by Salisbury. Southern Lehigh's only committed two. That's a far cry from our game on Thursday. Snyder for three. He's hot. Well, you talk about the specialist or the spot shooter. And, and this is what Southern Lehigh seems to have. Right now, he's the difference in the game. Faust, he matches two of them. Snyder with 10 already. 21-18. As well as Southern Lehigh's playing, Salisbury staying right Yeah, with that's them. right. They can't put it away. Well, a team like Southern Lehigh won't put you away, Gary. They're too deliberate, too tempoed. Sacks. 
As the ball slapped away by Faust, Hubbard can't get control. Snyder down inside, up and in by Mack. That's a four-point play, guys. You lose it on offense, you get it back on a turnover, and you score off the turnover. Salisbury had the two-on-one, and Antoine could not get enough juice on the ball to get it to Faust. Faust, he may have walked. See, we have a foul first. We do. The foul's going to be called on Sachs. That's his second, team's third. Now, yeah, where are they going to call it? On the drive, on the floor? I believe they yeah. are. So the no shot. It's their fourth, I believe, Gary. Both teams will be in the one-on-one. -on -one. I've got him for three. Three it is. It is. The third. Jimmy Coyle into the ball game. Dick, and as we said, he played a nice ball game on Saturday night. The 6-2 freshman. A lot of good young freshmen walking in the halls of Southern Lehigh as Ebersol goes out. Back in. Rodenberger. Way outside. Faust. See, Faust is an igniter. Gary Norris is more of a personal type player. All by himself, and he misses the peeper, but there's Hamilton. I told you, this. you know what happened, Gary? Again, it was a sub, and no one knew who was taking that sub on the way in. That's two baskets they picked up in that manner. And he was a sub. It was Jimmy Coyle who was all by himself. Nobody knew who had him, but he missed the layup. Hamilton there to follow, 25-21, Southern Lehigh. Faust for three again. That won't go. Rebound, Hamilton. And a foul. I believe it'll be called on Oak. It is. See, you do not notice a Jason Mack or a Hamilton very much, Gary, other than when they do the yeoman job on the board, simply because Salisbury's going to handle the ball for the most part with her two ball handlers and with the perimeter shooting of Snyder. But you talk blue collar. It's Mack and Hamilton at a real blue collar for Southern Lehigh. Hamilton goes 6-4. Mack goes 6-2. At the line is Rob Hamilton. He has four points. His first foul shot of the night. In fact, only our third foul shot all evening long. That's not going to be any good. Rebound controlled by Oaks. Again, a four-point Southern Lehigh lead. Approaching the three-minute mark. Three for Hubbard? No. Off the back of the iron. Rebound. Rodenberger, Faust for three. No. Rodenberger again. Stauffer with a save. Stauffer down inside. Oh, he's hammered. Foul's going to be on Yerkes. See, now there, there's a big upsetting thing to Coach Schaefer and the rest of the Spartans, Gary. You know, they'll give you one on defense, but they don't want to give you the cheapie. And here you're talking second and very soon third after a save shot off the board. And that is not what Coach Schaefer wants. The thing that kills you, though, Dick, is you're, you have good box-out position, yep. but they're shooting shots that are coming back over yep. your head. There's not much you can do about well, it. Longer shot, longer rebound. Yeah. So Coach will look at that and say, you can't give him three shots, but not too much so than Lehigh could do about that. You know, sometimes that bothers me in the perimeter game more than the, the three-point area itself, guys is the long rebound and, and the uh, uh, expanded averages, rebounding average of guards. It seems like guards are out rebounding a lot of your inside people. I'll tell you, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna have us shoot that under, underhand three-point <laughs> shot so the rebound's not as long. Well, you set up that funnel for the ball to come down to you in the rebound in the paint and it comes back out over your head, out of the paint, there's not too much you can do. And the good hustle by Rodenberger that time made it positive for Salisbury. That shot by Coyle. Is no good off the mark. Faust tried to drop it to Hubbard, couldn't get it to him. Now that is not an out of character shot for Coyle. That's an elbow jumper and he is a perimeter player despite his size and despite his youth. Salisbury trails by three. It seems like they've trailed by three or four almost this whole basketball game. Stoffer's been pretty quiet tonight. He has yes, one he has. field goal. Is wrestler Hubbard, he's been very quiet. Almost two steals by the Southern Lehigh D. See, they're in a custom zone, Gary, unaccustomed zone because of the out of bounds situation, and they're just not used to it. They want to get in that man situation. Wrestler, no rebound, good rebound by Alt. 
between two Southern Lehigh players. He gets fouled. He earned that one. Well, I think the funny thing about the defense is you're supposed to get better, better defensive board position on his own. Now that is, that is a play that will drive a coach crazy. Oh, and a white shirt will take it away from two blues. Hold at the line. He drops the first. Well, it's the other guys from Salisbury again that are keeping in the game, other than uh, this little spurt by Spout here in the second, by Faust here in the second quarter. I think he's off the bench, scoring uh, seven points. Yeah, and wrestler sitting. Stoffer will sit down. Rodenberger back in the ball game. 147 on the clock. Now the full court denial. Hubbard has to be careful. He has two fouls. Snyder guarded by Faust. Gives the ball to Faust. Snyder keeps it away. Drops it off down the lane. Yerkes loses the basketball. What do we have? We have a foul. It's going to be on Hamilton. You know, you talk about accidental fouls, Gary. That's one. You had Salisbury going over up not excuse me not over the top they went above and i'll be darned if he doesn't come down right on hamilton's hand i hope we catch it here there's the two-man game the give back now watch this ah uh, we, we missed it he actually came down on his hand that was a tough foul to get rodenberger at the line paul drops the third the salisbury's certainly been a stranger to the line this evening too Falcons now four out of five from the line. They've tied this game up at 25. Rodenberger puts them up by one. Minute and 30. Quick first half. Snyder has to be careful of the five-second violation. He wasn't going anywhere, and Fowl certainly guarding him closely enough. Yerkes. Boyle, he's fouled. Foul on Rodenberger. I think what's surprising to me at this stage, Gary, and with this score, is to find Snyder out at the top handling the ball. You'd almost think that that would be a saxon Yerkes deal, although I know one of them is out of the game. You know, it seems like you almost want it in your hand of your, pen your guard penetrators at that time, and he's handled the last three possessions. Uh, one of them a turnover, one almost a, a held ball situation. Good move here by Bill Pollock. Nick he sits Hubbard down with two fouls with a minute and six to go and brings Ebersol in. He doesn't want to get him in foul trouble. Coyle, two for two from the foul line. He gets on the board. 27 26, Southern Lehigh. And we're on a slow seesaw here. The lead has exchanged hands twice now, and Rodenberger can't get it to fall. Rebound by Mack. Mac almost loses it. Up the floor to Coyle. Snyder. Boy, he wanted to make something happen there. And good defense by Faust. Try to go down inside. Can't do it. Do we have a foul? Yes, we do. And I think it's on Rodenberger against Taylor. Stauffer into the ball game. He will replace Rodenberger. Also in the game, Jason Lakey, 5'9", junior, number 10, replaces Wrestler. First foul shot is good by Taylor. He's on the board. If the substitutions hold for the rest of the half, Gary, uh, I think a very unusual aspect is without being in foul trouble, you're ending up with three starters from each team on the floor in a very, very tight ball game. Kind of indicates the confidence these two coaches have in their that, bench. You're telling me. There's a delay game. Well, I should say last shot game. This is Lakey. That's Stauffer. That's Ebersol. So ball handling guards in there right now. Faust as good as they come with the basketball. Salisbury has a three-point deficit. Ebersol, he loses the basketball. Oh, there's a collision. 
and there's the horn. So the first half ends with a bit of a mugging in the paint. And with Southern Lehigh up by three, they lead 29-26. Stay with us. We'll put some numbers together and be right back. When I first tried drugs, it seemed kind of fun. But after a while, I knew I was losing control, so I quit. I've tried quitting three times since then. In only two years, I've lost everything I ever cared about. My life is a mess. I need control again. Call your friends at the Central Assembly of God, 1300 Eaton Avenue in Bethlehem, 865-0577. Join Aunt Patsy, Professor Bob, and friends for Happenings, the Lehigh Valley's only live children's program. Thursdays at 6.30, right here on Cable 4. Happenings can be good things, and happenings can be bad. You're viewing Twin County Cable 4, your choice for community programming in the Lehigh Valley. We are back. The crowd kind of settling down, headed for the refreshment stand, and the two teams are in the locker room, and let's take a look at the individual statistics. And, Dick, I want you to explain something to me. Two games in a row now, Antoine Hubbard has just not been a part of the Salisbury offense. Yeah, well, that's it. You just answered it. See, you're going to see in the paper guards where, if let's, let's just say that the game's over right now, the headline would be so-and-so stops, uh, stops uh, Hubbard. Nobody's stopped him. There is nothing special being done defensively. You hit it on the head. He's just not a part of the Salisbury offense. Now, that's not a derogatory statement because Salisbury seems to be getting all they want in other areas. Hey, they got Rodenberger in the, in, in the paint. They had Ressler down low on one, and they certainly got fouls from the perimeter. You know, they seem to be getting what they want without involving the shooting of Hubbard. Other aspects of Hubbard, yeah. You know, the defense, the penetration, things like that, the ball handling. But the shooting of Hubbard, they seem to be going without, and it's without a box or an overplay or something like that defensively. All right, let me play devil's advocate then for a second. I'm sure there are people sitting at home saying, if Salisbury's going to win this ball game, you've got to get the ball in Hubbard's hands. Is that true or is that false? Not so, because I'd say look back to Thursday. You won the ball game without getting... Well, I'll take it back just a little guy. Not the ball in his hands to score, mm -hmm. but maybe the ball in his hands to do other things with it. But he doesn't have to score. They showed that the other night. To me, the greatest thing about Faust the other night was the way he broke that pressure. Oh, my God. He just boop, 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 dribbled it up. And whether it's zone or man, I don't care how many are on him, he was able to go right through it. Well, to me, that was a great, great contribution. And I didn't look at the point scored. So you don't really need the scoring of Hubbard to turn this thing around. But you do need Hubbard involved in the total game. And as we look at the individual store scoring, of course, Boomer Snyder really having a great night for Southern Lehigh. He's got a couple of three-pointers besides. And again, the Salisbury story, somebody pops off that bench to come in and score for you. Olt came in in the second period and scored seven points, and he's right behind Faust. You know, it's really almost a carbon copy, Gary, of last Thursday's game. It really is. You, you don't have the big names on the scoreboard the way you had them before. I think if there's one big difference, I think it's Snyder with the perimeter. Well, you'll see another big difference, too, as we look at the team statistics. Remember how poorly Southern Lehigh shot the ball on Thursday night? They're not shooting the ball poorly tonight, Dick. Well, they're making makeable shots, which they didn't make. The, uh, they had the shots the other night. That's why the other night wasn't a 14 or 16-point difference. It Back really to, wasn't. Interestingly enough, I think they had easier shots the other night. They're making some big outside jump that, shots That's tonight. right. Well, that's why I think Snyder, I said Snyder, I thought, has been the main mm -hmm. difference because the other night he wasn't hitting it. Tonight it is. And, that, hey, that's the way it is with a perimeter shooter guard. They're either going to win or they're, they're not. You know, there's no difference or you're not going to get fouled or anything else. All in all, it is a very close basketball game. It's only a three-point difference. Salisbury, uh, of course, they're shooting pretty well. 42% is certainly acceptable. And they're taking more shots than Southern Lehigh is. And before we break away here, we have Ron D'Arginio. And, Ronnie, if you'll step in here a little bit. Ron, of course, part of the Lark Committee that puts together the basketball game. And less people think that uh, the Lark basketball game is put together on a weekend or so. These guys work all year long to get this event going, and 
uh, we take great pleasure in letting you know about the Lark tournament as early as possible so you can get ready for us. Lark, uh, Lark coming up, Ron, everything in place, ready to go? Well, we're working on it. We're working <laughs> on it. No, nothing, there's never a situation where everything is in place. Something always will go wrong, but we'll handle it. Let's April, talk about the big events. April 4th, 5th, and 6th will be the tournament. Uh, girls doubleheader Thursday night, the 4th. Boys doubleheader Friday night, the 5th. The sixth, of course, will be the, the winners, girls early, boys late, and in between the induction ceremonies. Uh, uh, there will be two women inducted this year, and uh, we have a banquet again this year. The only, the only difference this year between the last two years with the banquet is because Easter Sunday falls the Sunday before the tournament begins, we have to push the banquet ahead one extra week. So the banquet will fall March 24th. The tournament will then come 10 days later. The guest speaker for the banquet on the 24th will be uh, Mimi Griffin, who is a local girl who's doing color commentary for men's and women's basketball on ESPN and uh, CBS. And uh, the tickets for the, uh, the banquet will be $20. We had to raise the price this year because uh, we had to offset our expenses. Last year, we lost money on the banquet. It was a great turnout, and, and uh, uh, we thought it was very successful, but the bottom line is we did lose some money, and we're not looking to make money. We just simply want to break even. Well, Ron, I can tell that you've worked on TV before. I had a list of questions. You answered all of them before I asked it. <laughs> so we certainly will look forward to it. We're going to have dunking in a three-point uh, competition. Yeah, everything, again? basically everything will be the same as, as uh, last year. We had a meeting yesterday with uh, East Penn and Colonial League uh, coaches, and uh, they voted yesterday, and uh, the teams have already been determined. So uh, all we're waiting for now is, is the, the champions. Uh, so we can pick our coaches. And we'll be there. You know that. We wish you the very best. If we can help out any way we can, we would love to uh, to do just that. But Twin County will be broadcasting the entire tournament as we've done, I think, every year since its inception. It's been a while. I, I think uh, I've been involved in it for this is my 10th year. I think the tournaments have gone on close to 15 or 16. Okay. Thank you, Ron D'Argenio. And we'll see you, I'm sure, in gym after gym as you follow <laughs> a lot of these teams as they play. Okay. Half time Thank score. You, 29-26, we'll be right back with tip-off. If you want a truck, you have to come to a Chevrolet dealer. And really, you have to come to Scott Chevrolet because we have the best selection. And we feel very confident that we have the, the sales expertise here to set our customers up with the right kind of vehicle for their needs, and that's extremely important when we're dealing with, with trucks. We can give just as good a deal, if not better, than our competition, and our customer is going to be taken care of better after the sale. We are back. We welcome you back. Dick Tracy, Bill Pollock's team down by three. Is he going to have to make any adjustments, or continue to play straight up the way he's been doing? Well, I noticed one thing. When he, when he took, uh, you, you, you called uh, when he took Hubbard out, uh, probably to protect him from getting that third or something like that. I think he also told him another thing. Don't sit here and worry about points. Because one of the things Bill told me before the game tonight is that Hubbard is doing so much for the team without scoring. And he was finally able to see it last Thursday when he looked up at Bill. He says, you know, a pass is as important as points scored, you know. And, and I, now Bill must try to impress him with that. You know, Hubbard, let's face it, he knows Gary only has two points scored. And it's probably bothering him mentally. Well, we'll see as things unfold. Right away, they go to Wrestler. He doesn't waste any time putting one up off the glass. And just like that, that three-point lead is a one-point lead for Southern Lehigh. It is Snyder, Yerkes, Sachs, Mack, and Hamilton for the blue shirts of the Spartans. That shot by Mack, and he gets the three-point lead right back. Mack has two key field goals that they would not normally say is a big play for him. He has two outside shots that are key. For the white shirts, the Salisbury Falcons with a basketball Rodenberger, that's Faust. Stauffer's 24, Hubbard's 23, and Wrestler is 14. Hubbard, he may want a shot right here. Off the screen, won't go. See, when you get a little worried about your offense, Gary, and about getting, you know, getting the point, you're sometimes going to force a shot to get it. Is it a five-point lead? Point. It is. Yerkes. I'll tell you, now, you know, that, that's a great play by Matt. 
He's outside. He just hit a jumper from the same place. So the whole defense is leaning, and he just dips it inside. Faust tries to get a three-bagger. He can't. But he does get the basketball back. Stauffer. Guarded by Snyder. Hubbard. Hubbard's picked up by Yerkes. Snyder switches off on him. Good defense, Dick. They play good man-to-man -man defense. Well, it's good fundamental defense. That's what you like about it, Gary. Hubbard for three. No, and there's a hat by Matt. His second. Team's first. You know, he might not have had to do that, Gary. He just might have beaten him on the leap itself. He might not have even fouled him, but he had such a, a powerful <laughs> leap. Yeah, that's a good word. Demonstrative leap that uh, the foul was called. There's the out-of-bounds zone now. See, now this is the time for Fauster or Hubbard to get a good scene shot. You know, one that really makes you feel good through a zone. Stoffer, maybe. No. Rebound match. Less demonstrative, but the result was better. Five points. Southern Lehigh lead. They can get their biggest lead of the night here with a basket. There's Here's that good offense. There. Yep. Down the lane, up and in by Yerkes. Yeah, I'll tell you a difference. I, I hope this doesn't sound too goofy, but it seems that Southern Lehigh values a possession a lot more than Salisbury. Salisbury's saying, Gary, we're going to get it back again. You know, so let's go to town. Beautiful bank shot by Ressler. There's a foul on Faust. You know, you, you make, I didn't think it sounded goofy at all because uh, Bobby Schaefer makes the point that he wins games defensively. Yep. And that simply means that when he's on offense, he wants to make certain that that's when he gets his deuce. Take care of the ball. There's Mac up and in. See, people are going to say Mac and Snyder are playing beyond their game. They're not, Gary. They are playing their game because every one of their baskets and good moves is just a real solid basketball move. Antoine Hubbard. By the way, I do reserve the right to express that sometimes you might sound goofy. I didn't mean <laughs> during the whole uh, the whole game. Majority. <laughs> there were a few people out here at Allen Friday night who felt the same way. I heard they got on you a little bit here. They don't usually do that here at Allen. I don't know of any fans well, for that, Allen. Well, that's the tax yeah. part of the admission. <laughs> See, without the tax, that's, you just pay to come to the game. Beautiful pass inside. Hamilton frees up and gets the layup. Gary, there's a good example of talking about valuing a possession. You know, and really just work, work, work until you get it your way. Woohoo! good call. Good call, Sam. <laughs> Salisbury just barely gets a timeout call before the walk. It is 39-32, 4 minutes, 30 seconds. Third period in Southern Lehigh on the way to a Colonial League Championship. Stay tuned. Lehigh Valley is going to the dogs. Pot's hot dogs, that is. Yes, everybody's rushing into their nearby Pot's doggy shop for America's best hot dog covered with all their favorite stuff. So don't be left behind. Get your pups moving to the pots where you live or work. Fight the one you love. The critics raved and audiences cheered for the surprise smash hit of 1990. And viewers' choice has got it. Pretty woman walking down the street. Pretty woman the kind I like to meet. Pretty Woman. It's pretty amazing how easy it is to order on Viewer's Choice. You just can't see it often enough. The blockbuster hit Pretty Woman on Viewer's Choice. Now you know by now that we have a full slate of basketball games for you this week. Tomorrow night we already mentioned Whitehall Central at Whitehall. We're going to come back into the Colonial League on Friday night. Saucon Valley against Nazareth as uh, second half play starts tomorrow night. The Blue Eagles trying to get back on track. Saucon Valley just got knocked out of the championship game by five points on Saturday night. They're a team to watch again in the second half. Yeah, Coach Mattis talked about that, Gary. He said uh, that Saturday game, the loss, can only make us a better second-half team. 
And in talking to Bill Pollock, I said, Bill, how does your second half schedule look? And he said, well, good except. And the except, of course, was Southern Lehigh away to end the second half. And it is a very competitive league. A lot of the games played by Salisbury, Southern Lehigh, and Saucon, even to the teams below them, were two and three point basketball games. Way outside Hubbard, he's getting warm. Hubbard has seven. 39-35. Hamilton, boy, they, they received the ball in such a great position, position. offensively. Yep. Five second ball, closely guarded. You know, there's a, bit, a little bit of the Bill Pollock philosophy coming to life. One of the things I'm sure he said to Hubbard is, don't worry about the points. They'll come. And you had five. I thought we were going to make it seven. Just like that. Fouls on Mack. That's his third. Team's second. No, they're going to call it on Yerkes. Not Mack. So that's good news for Southern Lehigh. Yerkes is second. No shot. And now they're in the 2-3 zone. Stauffer thought about it. Back outside the foul. This time he does more than think about it. Mike Stauffer. You know, Gary, one of the questions you asked me the other day is, have I noticed much difference in the game? Uh, there's the biggest one. I was 39-32 Southern Lehigh. Uh, Salisbury gets two shots and are two points down. Yeah, there's there's one big difference I noticed. That three-point play. That turnaround jump shot by Yerkes won't go. Hubbard's out of bounds. You know, Dick, when you were coaching at Whitehall a few years back, when you had a two, three, or four-point lead, it was like a ten-point lead today. Yeah, yeah. It's that's, not the case. That's you know? right. It's not safe. Boomer Snyder, he's been kind of quiet. He has 12, first field goal of the second half. Boy, and the great thing about his field goals, Gary, is that they none is forced. Everyone is quite natural. He also doesn't seem to hit anything but the bottom of the hole. He's been right on target tonight. He wants another. Snyder, 10 feet away. Back up to a four, make it a six-point lead. 43-37, wrestler back in, Stauffer's out. That conversion was almost a planned event, Gary. You know what I mean? He came around, I said, I stabbed jumper here, so he's gonna be on me, so I'm gonna pump fake, a couple steps and come up, and it's exactly what he did. Beautiful pull-up, 10-foot jump shot. Hubbard, he thought about matching it, he got hammered. Foul's going to be on Yerkes, his third. I think he's going to regret that foul, Gary. Not only because it's a big three, but I don't think it was necessary because I don't think that shot's online. As off balance as the shot was taken, I'm not sure he could have reached the basket. Yeah. Some subs coming in now. We see Hamilton sitting down. York is sitting down. Coyle's back in there. And... I believe that uh, Chris Taylor is back in there, too. Hubbard gets the first. Hubbard averaging 17 and a half in the league. He's averaging 22 and a half overall. Of course, he had that big 46-point game in an independent contest against, I believe, Northwestern. Fouls on Faust, his second, team second. I'm wondering if that was just full court man to man or why, because he was simply running alongside and there was there was no effort by any of the other defense to pick up or aid. It seemed like he was intent on committing a foul. Walk. Walk. Oh, with a good play. That was a, stop the feet. Yeah, he read the play. It was a two man game, a back to back play. Uh, the pass was simply a late arriving. He stepped in and walked with it. 
poor Salisbury, it's Old and Wrestler and Hubbard and Faust and Rodenberger. This is Coyle. Good job by Old. He would not let Taylor get the basketball. Nice job by Taylor to stop R Hubbard. Dropped off, beautiful play. Old can't get it down, he's hacked. Two-shot foul, the foul is going to be called on Taylor. There's Hubbard doing what you like to see him do, Dick. Yeah, that's right. You know, I don't know if Taylor, and you might get a shot of it here, is going to be able to guard Hubbard in an open court. I'm not sure that's even his man. I think he was looking yeah, to pick it up. get somebody to pick him up, and that's when Hubbard made things happen. Well, we have Yerkes out there, so you know, the only one left would be Sachs to take him. And I think Sachs is saddled on Faust. Good point. Yerkes is certainly uh, a defensive loss out there as much as he's an offensive loss. That well, might put Schneider on him, Gary. Holt can't convert, oh, can't, and there's no, Wrestler with a silly foul. Yeah. Yo, know, Gary, that's the funniest foul. He could be guarding him and laying on him all the way up, you know, which you can't tag, and it'd never be called. The official would holler, keep your hands off him. But here he reaches out at half court, and you get immediate call. That's a foul you get away with on a hot day in August on the playground. Yeah. Not here. Sacks. Snyder, he's got Hubbard on him. Well, Taylor found the way, but the ball's lost. Salisbury basketball. Taylor got into trouble, and he just dribbled into trouble. Still a four-point Southern Lehigh lead, a minute and seven seconds to go. Uh, it's going to be sacks on Hubbard. Fouls on Mack, I believe. That'll be his third. Southern Lehigh slowly, Dick, getting themselves in a little bit of foul trouble. Yeah, Bobby Schaefer definitely not happened defensively, Gary. Uh, they're out of sync defensively. They're leaving their feet, and they're falling for a lot of fakes. Rodenberger is two points in every quarter. He'll try to get his two points here in the third. There's one of them. has his two points for the third period. He has a total of six. 43-41. Sachs working against Faust. No easy task. I'll tell you, that's a different ball club, that team in blue without a three-guard offense, Gary, just two. Boy, they miss Yerke. He's coming back in, too. I'm not sure he'll get in here before the horn. As it looks like, Southern Lehigh may be thinking about a last shot. Playing catch on the perimeter. Final 15 seconds. Snyder, Sachs. Taylor, in the paint, no, rebound, foul. Going to be called on Hubbard. Hubbard's third. Hubbard went over the back. Boy, that, that is a big play, Gary. Not only because it's three on Hubbard, but you got your first string back in there for the last shot of the quarter. And it gets you the ball back. I think if you watch this closely, you'll see that this is a call that is absolutely correct. Right there. I, 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 it looked to me like he pushed him in the upper part of his body. He hammered Brian Snyder. And he sits down, does Hubbard, for the final seven seconds. Watch his set up for Snyder. Way outside. Coyle, no, off the iron. That's going to do it. At the end of three periods, it's still up in the air. Southern Lehigh leads 43-41. Stay with us.
The Bethlehem Restaurant and Diner, located on Catasauqua Road, is open 24 hours daily, except Sundays till 9 p.m. If dessert's on your mind, we've got some ice cream treats that can't be beat. Try your favorite milkshakes, ice cream sodas, and Sundays with all kinds of toppings and 12 delicious Hershey flavors. For a real change of pace, come in with your friends and gang up on the ultimate ice cream special, everything but the kitchen sink. Enjoy your favorite dessert at the Bethlehem Restaurant and Diner on Catasauqua Road. Watch Sunday nights at 10.30 as the students of Northampton Community College present Video Waves, the program which focuses on people and events that take place in the Lehigh Valley area. That's Video Waves, Sunday nights at 10.30. You're viewing Twin County Cable 4, your choice for community programming in the Lehigh Valley. We are back. We've played three periods of basketball, and Dick, not much has changed. This ball game just continues the same process. That's right. Well, Southern Lehigh, uh, not only had they had the deficit closed, Gary, excuse me, the difference closed a little bit, but now they also realize that scoring flow, Hubbard is back. Now, it's amazing that while Hubbard got hot, then we get not too much from Faust, points-wise. So now, is this the quarter where both of them light it up and turn it on? Because if it is, is and we haven't seen it now for seven quarters you know where they go simultaneously if it is then it's going to be an upbeat up tempo type and not only will a scoreboard be going but it also changes southern lehigh style and makes them rush a little bit 64 percent shooting by southern lehigh 45 percent by salisbury but as dick mentioned possessions seem to be a little more valuable to southern lehigh they're not taking as many shots as salisbury has this is why the presence of the tandem of, of Yerkes and Sachs is so much important simultaneously in the game, Gary. Well, it's the starting five in there right now for Southern Lehigh. Snyder. Maybe his first miss. What a strong rebound and follow-up by Rob Hamilton. Okay, advocates of Southern Lehigh basketball the students of the game. Maybe you don't like the shot because it's just a little bit hurried and not typical Snyder. But boy, the second part is typical. Mack, Hamilton on the board. Watch them surround it. They got a good size match inside. Just a little bit rushed there. But look at this board. Three-point play. Then he knifes inside to get position. Besides that, he continues to get the three-point play and make it a 46 to 41 score. Way outside, Hubbard. Rebound, controlled by Snyder. And now look for the cheapie. Oh, Marcus. brings it back out. I want to watch something. Mark this down. Oh, it wasn't pretty, but Mac got it. At the 721 mark, Snyder forewent a drive and possible two points, brought it out. Down to the 7.03, and they go for the short bank shot. You're absolutely correct, but better give credit to who's due. Mike Yerkes was the guy who was making the move and brought it back. And, Dick, I think the story of the game is your phraseology. Possessions just seem yeah. to be a little more valuable to the Spartans. 19 seconds off the clock, Gary, without giving the ball to Salisbury and still scoring at the other end. Foul call on Hamilton. That's his third. We are in a one-on-one -on -one situation. This is foul. Off the mat, says Sam Eric. Salisbury basketball. Hubbard. Quick baseline move, yes. Cover with 11. 48, 43. Every time Salisbury gets close, Southern Lehigh has had an answer. Oh, nice pass by Snyder. Great block by Hubbard. Hubbard block Mac. Look at that ball handling. There's a foul. It's not a smart foul. 
Yerkes his fourth. Yeah, I think he was afraid he was going to go around him, Gary. Didn't realize he was getting great help. You're going to see a lot of interesting things here. A block by Hubbard, and then a globetrotter exhibition by Hubbard, and then the offensive move to the basket by Hubbard. I guess you're not going to see all of that, but you did see the block. I'll tell you, that was a great, yeah, that's right. That was a great block on Mack. You know, giving up about three inches and then pinning him on the inside and then coming up and scoring at the other end. Hubbard can't get the foul shot. 48-44. Rodenberger, he walked. Boy, Bobby Schaefer is screaming for a timeout, Gary. He did not like that Mac pass. Timeout called down on the floor by Southern Lehigh. 6.08 on the clock. We've decided nothing. 48-44, the Spartans. Stay with us. may be gone, but there's one package being held over just for you. The Money Store Prime Package with fixed rate home equity loans as low as prime. We're extending our holiday offer for a limited time only to help homeowners pay off credit card bills, make home improvements, anything at all. Trust the Money Store to give homeowners a prime package when they need it most. Call right now. 1-800-LOAN-YES. Program may be canceled without notice. In today's world, it's hard enough to keep up, let alone keep informed. Now there's a way to do both. Every half hour, 24 hours a day, get the latest news, business, and sports. Continuously updated, clear, and concise. There, when you need it. Headline news, anytime, all the time. America braces for 1991. The sins of the 80s have come due. Now more than ever, a worried nation turns its eyes to <laughs> HBO, where 1991 is going to be great. There'll be uncut laughter, unbridled passion, outrageous specials, socially acceptable violence, and the biggest box office hits on television. Yes, HBO in 91, a ray of light in an otherwise yuck year. Dick, I would venture to guess that Southern Lehigh has led in this ball game all but about 34 seconds. Yeah, I, I would venture to guess that you're exactly right. Uh, see, they, they've owned uh, the tempo of the game, Gary, the, the creativity part of the game. Now, fortunately for them, they haven't had to play catch-up. If they had to run from a five- or seven-point deficit, I don't know, you know, because they do cherish the possessions. I don't know if they could rush it just a little bit. Dick, and I think about the next three minutes, eight seconds are going to be the real key. Can they play on the floor with Salisbury without Mike Yerkes? Yeah. And he's going to sit now, I would guess, for about three minutes. Whoa, we got to walk. Big See, turnover. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Schaefer is saying to himself, first of all, why do I have two inside men handling the ball in the backcourt? That's the first thing. If you're going to take it out, get out of the way. And maybe another repercussion from the Yerkes foul situation. Hubbard, no. Rebound strong by Hamilton. Up the floor to Taylor. He does not take it against Hubbard. Maybe he should have. Hubbard has three fouls. Good strong move by Mack. We have a foul. It's going to be called on Taylor. Or there's the broken glass aspect area that we saw last Thursday night. A great move as you called it. But, boy, just a hard boing off the board. Yeah, you, you said it the other night. It's not a boing up. It's a layup. Yeah. You just lay it up there. Well, Salisbury has hovered around the lead all night long, but they haven't had it very often. And now they're hovering to within four. Stauffer can cut it to two. Stauffer has five points. Oh, we're going to see Yerkes, Gary, with four. 
Things are getting a little critical, says Bob Schaefer. He's not going to let Yerkes sit down for the three minutes I thought he might. Taylor loses the ball. It's going to be Southern Lehigh basketball, and I think Bob has seen enough. Yeah. Of... I, he needs help in that backcourt, at least with the ball handling aspect. This is where I think you tell your your player, Yerkes, you say, look, I need you on the floor. Yeah. I do not need you sitting next to me. You go out there and play, but don't commit that fifth foul. Sacks. And Mack and Yerkes. Two points. Salisbury lead. Slapped away by Hubbard. Hubbard's played some good defense in the second half. Now he wants to play a little offense. Oh, what a rebound by Stauffer. No. Southern Lehigh basketball. Again, Southern Lehigh cherishes their possessions just a little bit more. Sounds very quick to move it up and throw it up. Want to move it out the ball now if you're in blue. And they get those screens away from the ball. Oh, beautiful play. Down inside. Yerkes with the basket. Boy, you get that man on your hip. It doesn't matter what your size or his size is. 15-footer foul. Rebound wrestler. Wrestler is fouled by Snyder. Fifty forty six. Ian Wrestler off of a twenty two point effort tonight has six. Has not been to the foul line. I tell you though, he's still been pretty steady, Gary. Hasn't had logged the, the minutes that, that he did previously, but he's still played awful steady. Makes one out of two. It's a three-point lead. Hubbard steals it right away. It won't go. Foul. We're going the other way. It's on wrestler. I wonder. I, I haven't seen him that much. I wonder if his release has always been that quick. Because he does certainly shoot a very quick shot. What a big play. You talk about a game of inches. If that ball drops, it's 50-49. You have no foul. It doesn't drop. A foul on the rebound. And it's 50-47, and Southern Lee has a chance to go up by five. Mac. This guy's played a steady game yes, tonight. Yes, he has. Yeah, he and Snyder seem to be the offensive difference. Talk about balanced scoring. Yerkes with 11. Snyder with 14. Mac gets them both. He now has 12. And Rob Hamilton with nine. Faust, he's in trouble. Wrestler, yes. Coming up big again. 52-49. There's a trap. 5 Hubbard passes Mack off to Rodenberger. Down inside, Sachs, he's fouled. Foul by Faust. Creighton has committed his fourth. Four fouls on Faust, four on Yerkes, three on Hamilton and Mack and Hubbard. It's going to be interesting now because uh, obviously if they stay in the flex, Gary, the one-four set, they're, they're going to be finding themselves at the foul line. It's a matter of kicking them in. Brett Sachs, he has three tonight, but he's the quarterback. He runs the show out there. The lead is back up to four. Seems like it's been four all night. Now it's five. Salisbury beat Southern Lehigh by 14 last Thursday night to send this game into a championship playoff situation. Fouls for three. They need it. Won't go. Rebound. And a foul. Fouls on Rodenberger. You know, one of the things, Garen, and I think we both agree on it, that it was truly no 14-point difference last Thursday. I, I, I really don't think the margin was that big. 
No, the margin was Southern Lehigh's inability to shoot the basketball last week from in close. They just couldn't do it. That has not been the story tonight. Rob Hamilton will seek double figures here. He could become the fourth Southern Lehigh player to go into double figures. It seems now like Salisbury's pressing a little bit on their possessions. Big miss. Big miss. See if Salisbury takes advantage. Hubbard. Boy, can he dribble. Whoa, what a block. What a block by Hamilton. I think he kept Hubbard from even leaving his feet. <laughs> Southern Lehigh doesn't have to hurry here. Good block by Stauffer. And uh, that brought Bobby Schaefer up a little bit. I don't think he wanted that shot there. I know where your players would be right now. <laughs> In ice, <laughs> packed away. What do we have? We're going to go the other way. Oh, does that foul hurt? That's Yerkes' oh, fifth dick boy. off the ball. Off the ball. Tough situation now for Southern Lehigh. It gives Salisbury life. Let's take a look at the Rob Hamilton. I think this is a block or a plant. This is a pin. <laughs> Whoa. At the foul line. Great and Faust were still waiting for the fifth Southern Lehigh player. It'll be Taylor. Dick's still a lot of time now yeah. with Yerkes on the bench. Boy, you hate to lose a player of that caliber uh, for the things he's doing and the things you need him to do in the last three minutes on a play like that. Salisbury needs these foul shots. They're down by five. Comes up short. Out of bounds, it'll be Salisbury basketball. Now I'm wondering, off a of Salisbury score, and they come at you, Gary, in some kind of three deep pressure defense, uh, who becomes a third ball handler? I imagine Taylor. Well, it's a question we'll have to answer when we come back. Oh, 54, 49, 259 on the clock. We'll be back. The critics raved and audiences cheered for the surprise smash hit of 1990. And viewer's choice has got it. Pretty woman, walking down the street. Pretty woman, the kind I like to meet. Pretty woman. Pretty woman. It's pretty amazing how easy it is to order on viewer's choice. You just can't see it often enough. The blockbuster hit Pretty Woman on viewer's choice. They're back, invading your home on Viewer's Choice in Gremlins 2. PBS Flicks called it the funniest film of the year. Wild. Now was that civilized? Wacky and weird. Pat Collins, WWOR-TV, said it's great. It's hipper and funnier than the first. They're Gremlins 2, the new batch. Get out one time, won't you? On pay-per-view. Premieres Monday, January 7th on Viewer's Choice with showings all day for your convenience. Him and we've got him. The world's greatest detective is coming into your home on Viewer's Choice. Trace it, trace it, trace it. I'm running him out. Easy, convenient, and delivered right to you on pay-per-view. It's PG-rated action on Viewer's Choice. Warren Beatty is Dick Tracy. Premieres Friday, January 18th on Viewer's Choice with showings all day for your convenience. We are back. Good time out by Bill Pollock, Dick. They've been struggling at this end of the floor That's trying right. to score. They need one here. Absolutely, and of course, set up your defense, too. You know, if we convert, we do now, we certainly know that a prime ball handler has gone from the Southern Lehigh attack. So how are we going to attack this thing, man? Oh, and who is that third one that, that Southern Lehigh is going to bring up? Uh, I was wondering about Coyle, Gary, uh, simply because of his ranginess. But then I got to thinking, gee whiz, only a flash. You know, maybe... He doesn't have the experience to handle handle the ball in a situation such as this. 
All right, they're blowing a lot of horns down there. I'm not sure what that all means, but they're going to give the ball to Faust. Faust looks for Stauffer. He finds Stauffer. He's guarded by Snyder. Down inside to Wrestler. He wants to make a move. He's hacked. Bow is going to be on Mac, and that's his fourth. All of a sudden, the fouls mounting up. Yeah, and it, it's it's no longer real solid defense, Gary. It's reach and grab defense, you know. Uh, I don't know if you're just afraid to give him that good tight shot or what. But Salisbury all of a sudden cannot find the hole. That one barely fights its way into the basket. Well, one of the cardinal principles is offensively, you must make the foul line your friend and not your enemy. All right. Southern Lehigh, not the same team without Yerkes in there to bring the ball up the floor. They look a little shaky. Mac, I don't know. I do. <laughs> <laughs> not a good shot by Jason Mack. Hubbard for three. No. It's all white. Wrestler blocked by Hamilton. Hubbard, yes. 54-52. Two, two, two on the clock. Nobody wants to handle the ball, Gar. Hubbard's fourth. Rodenberger, Alt will sit. There you get a look at number 32. If there is such a thing as a good foul, this may be one. This may be one. A non-starter, relatively inexperienced junior, putting him on the foul line at crunch time in a one-on-one -on -one in order to get possession back. A little yeah. early yet. Dick, they're six for seven from the line in the fourth quarter. You know, Gary almost violated. He almost went over. 11 for 14 on the night for Southern Lehigh. They oh, are wow. shooting well from That's the foul that's crunch. Hubbard. He wants to do it himself. 56-54. Stolen away by Stauffer. Hubbard. He'll go one-on-one -on -one against Snyder. No. Rebound. Sacks. Three-on-one. Taylor. No, rebound, Rodenberger. Hubbard. Oh, no, way outside. It's good, and he's fouled. Oh, my. Wow. Timeout. Southern Lee Hyde. Take a listen, and we're going to watch it again. That's the first one. We're just going to stay right with this whole sequence. Here's a missed layup. Let's go the other way, Dick. Dick, I know this is your favorite shot. Wow. Wow. Dick Tracy's speechless. I've never heard well, you, that. You'd never want to follow, you know, in that situation. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I'm not coaching out there. I'm just observing. Uh, I, I don't think I, I'd say go ahead. I'd invite anybody to take that shot, really. And certainly you don't want to put them on the line afterwards. Uh, but I'm thinking about the other end, Gary. Something I said to you the other night about a layup. Instead of taking the shot, we got a three-on-one fast break, and his momentum's carrying him too far. And if he simply lays it up rather than shoots it up. But again, we reflect back on Yerkes leaving this game. Yeah. Southern Lehigh cannot handle the basketball with Yerkes on the bench. The way they have all game long. Don't get me wrong. Someone still has to carry the ball, Gary, but boy, do they miss him with a handler. Hubbard has 20. 58-56, Salisbury. All the momentum's on their side. Foul on Faust. His third. I don't think you want that foul, Dick. See, that, that's that's what I'm talking about, a possession. You know, they, they might be saying to themselves, geez, let's get this ball back quick so we can put it up again. You know, and, and so they don't mind committing the foul. It depends on your philosophy, Gary. Well, Brett Sachs will go to the line. He's two for two from the foul line. He has four points. 
probably the one guy you definitely don't want to put there. He's short. Big rebound. Boomer Snyder for three. No. Stauffer. Foul. What a reach. Yes. Sacks. His third. One twenty-one. Yeah, I was thinking ahead. I was wondering if, if Coach Pollock's able to bring it up, would he go into some type of delay? One twenty-one, eighty-one second. I say no, that's much too long. Let's see what Michael Stoffer does. He is two for two from the line in the fourth period. He just gets it over the rim. Now there you are, Garrett. Talk about their philosophies. You're going up last time with a ball. I foul you in the backcourt, put you on the line. You don't score, give it back to me, and I score the foul. Out. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Rebound, Hunter. the rebound. <laughs> Bill wants a timeout. And we will stay right here. Let's run down the point totals as we have them to this point. Brett Sachs with four. Yerkes is gone from the game with 11. Snyder, Boomer Snyder has 14. Jimmy Coyle with two. Chris Taylor with four. Jason Mack has 12. Rob Hamilton with nine. For Salisbury, Wrestler has 10. Faust has nine. He has not scored in the second half. Hubbard has 20. He's just scored 18 in the second half. Stauffer with seven. Alt with seven. And Rodenberger with six. A lot of people on the board tonight, Dick Tracy. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm trying to analyze the timeout, Gary. I think it's a good timeout by Bill. Certainly he wants to know what he's going to do with the ball. He also wants to know what he's going to do if it becomes a four- or five-point lead. But I think the situation really was nice. The timeout was nice for Southern Lehigh. They're thinking, are we going to pressure? What kind of pressure? If we get the turnover, are we going to call a timeout to eat the clock? There are so many things they can plan ahead for. All right, the brain trust at both sides of the scorer's table have gone to work. Hubbard. Hubbard. No. Rebound. We've got a foul on Wrestler. His fifth, Dick. Yep, he's going by. Well, I guess the freeze wasn't on. No, the freeze wasn't on. He took a little four shot, Gary. But again, that's it doesn't appear to be too contrary to style. Because now you go up and shoot. You know, your chances of not making my rebounding are good. And even if you do make it, I get the ball back. Well, here's the guy that stopped Hubbard, Rob Hamilton. But boy, does he need to put a couple of baskets in right now. One and one. As the first. I don't think Salisbury really minds if he scores one or two here. Because you know you got the ball back with 75 seconds left. Hamilton has 10 points. He has 11. 59, 58, Salisbury. Faust against Sachs. Remember, Hubbard has four fouls. Rodenberger will come back outside. Stauffer, foul. Boy, now you look about your patterns. Boy, do they look for Faust and Hubbard now. There's a foul. Good foul by Snyder. He only had one. Boy, you know, you talk about your free will and your style, non-style, but they sure do who know in a disciplined manner who to go, whom to go to with, with the ball handling, Gary, when it's on the line. Well, they have the best of a bad situation. The best Salisbury can do is go up by three, yeah. so you know you can tie. Stauffer says, that's the way I always shoot. Off the glass. You should only get three quarters for that one, Gary. <laughs> that would give you a chance with a three-point shot. He's still laughing. 60-58. Mitches the second. Suddenly, I can tie. 59 and three quarters to 58, Gary. <laughs> a two-pointer put him up. Stauffer has eight. Taylor coming off the screen. Sacks. 30 seconds. 
Hold on. Here comes a full court by man, a man to man pressure. Look at Ebersole coming in. How about that, Jeff? They're going to get some ball handling in there. And there'll be a timeout called by Southern Lehigh. All right, let's uh, play official here. I'm sure it was the right call because it was a walk, but let's see how pressure can have an effect on a game. And not necessarily defensive pressure either. Mental. He's just trying to organize things. Now he'll come off the screen. And you'll watch a walk. Ooh. Ooh. Did he change that right one? I saw the left one go, but I, I didn't see the change in the right one. I saw a stutter step with yeah. one, but not with two. I say, with the left yeah. one, it seemed all right, but he kept the pivot foot, it seemed. I tell you, Bobby Schaefer didn't gripe. He immediately no, got the he five. Shook his head. He said, okay, yes. 60-58. If there's anybody to foul, it might be Eversall. He has not scored any points tonight. Jamie in there to handle the basketball. I would never foul a guard, Gary. Really. I, I, I've all, I don't know why. Don't look at the stats or anything, but... There's Eversaw. Snyder can commit the foul. He does. Good job by Snyder. Well, that was pretty... That, there's one thing is a good foul. You don't want to let it go down too far. You certainly do want a possession out of this if they do score in the foul line. Well, maybe Eversaw can lock this up if he makes them both. He only makes one. He creates a little interest. If he doesn't make the first, he creates a lot of interest. He misses. Are we headed to overtime? Snyder. Taylor wide open. No. Taylor gets his rebound. Blue basketball. Gary, I wonder if there's such a thing as being open too much. Timeout. Southern High. Dick Tracy, get out your clipboard. We're going to make you analyze oh, a last out-of-bounds play. Well, I go to the shooter play. The shooter play to me would be have Snyder taking it out, go away from his pass. Pass to the wing, wing to the top, top back over to Snyder. Look for the two. Who needs a clipboard? That sounded simple enough. You watch him. I've seen him take it You're out You're going to go for the two or the three? Well, with Snyder, you go whatever's available. You know, you definitely need the two to tie. His momentum, Gary, from coming in from out of bounds on the offside. I don't want to sound too brilliant on this because we, we had them earlier in the year, and it's one of the things we scouted. He'll take the ball out of bounds, actually go away from his pass. And what they do is they weak side the ball around the perimeter and him coming. Now he's strong side, simply on the wing, and he looks for two or three. He has 14 in the ball game, and I believe, I, I believe he's only missed two shots all night long. So we'll look for number 20. The other way to end it, of course, would be with a drive. You know, go for broke, possible three. If not, at least get fouled and get on the line. They may even attempt to work the ball into Hamilton's hands inside for the Duke. Oh, coils in, Gary. That's an outside shooter. And he's on the block. All right. Salisbury's going to go 2-3, or are they going to go straight man-to-man? -man? No, they're going to go 2-3. But they have man-to-man -man on... Oh, there it is. We got a tie ball game. Rob Hamilton. One second on the clock. 60. 60. I'm sure we'll get another look. Okay. I'll tell you what I want to see, Gary. I don't want to see the basket. I want to see the miss. Was it a three attempt or two? Two by Taylor. Was Taylor was all by himself. I think they played man to man on Snyder. Well, they tried. They picked, they picked Hubbard across. That's right. They put Faust on Snyder. Playing man to man, it looked like a box and one. Yeah, and Hubbard was the guy that got lost at the top of the box. Take another look. Now watch watch this. foul, still follow Snyder. There it is, it's a two-pointer. And that's sack scary. And that's a clean rebound. See, it, it's going to your money. It's going to your perimeter one, and then a great board position to follow up two. Uh, that, that was pretty good sound knowledge here. And it was pretty fundamental. Well, what do you do with one second on the clock? Half-court pass, throw? I don't know about that, but I know Bobby Knight's coming on in 35 minutes. <laughs> well, it is obviously very difficult 
to pick up a Colonial League trophy. First half championship, anyway. Throw it to half court, Darren. Let him just turn and throw. There's wrestler at half. I think they'll probably get it in the hands of Hubbard. But I would throw it to half court, just let him turn and go. Allen was beaten in this gym by oh, yeah. a play like this by Freedom. Well, remember the one Deerhoff over Whitehall. Yeah. You'll never forget that one. There it, it is. The screen. Oh, off the iron, it would have counted. Well, we have played 32 minutes of basketball, and we still can't determine a first-half Colonial League champion. We're going overtime. It's 60-60. Stay with us. City of the Angels, Angel Town, City Under Siege, Gang Fights by Day, Full Scale War by Night. Angel Town, its history is written in pain. Olivier Gruner, Teresa Saldana, Angel Town. For gritty action, street gang style, order Angel Town on Viewer's Choice Pay Per View. Hello, I'm Pat Huber, and I've been affiliated with Cable 4 since 1979. We produce Sunshine People, Sunny Farms, and Happenings. Occasionally, you heard me share about starting a full-power television station in the Lehigh Valley. Well, that's now a reality. WBPH-TV60 began broadcasting on December 27th. Our family Christian programming format is revolutionary. Tell your friends the good news and watch for us here on Twin County Cable. I'm Watson Skinner, and I'd like to invite you to view Community Spotlight Wednesday at 8 o'clock, Friday at 7.30, as we continue to spotlight the many activities of the Lehigh Valley that make it a good place to live and for you to have a fulfilling life. Join us. You are viewing Twin County Cable 4, your choice for community programming in the Lehigh Valley. We don't get a lot of rest. We'll be back tomorrow night in the Whitehall Gymnasium. Central Catholic against Whitehall. Friday night, Colonial League, Saucon Valley against Nazareth. Next Saturday night, we'll be back on the wrestling mat as we will have Catasaqua against Wilson in the Caddy Gymnasium. Dick with Yerkes on the bench with five fouls. One would think Salisbury still has a slight advantage. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing uh, as a non-partisan bystander, Gary, that I would think would be the most affecting thing right now. The fact that Southern Lehigh is going without Yerkes, who is just more than a double-figure scorer tonight. He's an awful lot more. Primetime guard, good defender, uh, knowledgeable experience the whole bit. If, you, if Salisbury loses this game, they only have to look at one stat. Fourth quarter foul shooting, Dick, yep. 8 for 16. Wow. The tap. First possession will be Southern Lehigh. It's Matt. It's Coyle. It's a dude. There's that darn freshman on the game again in a critical situation. He was in in the final seven seconds, and here he scores in overtime. Oh, boy. It's Hubbard. It's a dude. I don't think they want to put Coyle on Hubbard man-to-man, -man 62 off. Coyle, Matt, Snyder. Sacks. Boy, he doesn't play like oh, a oh. Made the move, missed the shot, lost the ball. Oh, a little wine and dine move inside. Where do you find a freshman that wants to do it? Ooh. He wants to have the ball in his hand. You know, Gary, he handled the, the, the ball from the backcourt all the way in under. Alt comes in for wrestler. Hubbard for three. It hangs around the rim, won't go. Rebound Southern Lehigh. Is it going to be lost? Blue basketball. The Southern Lehigh size, and by size, I think I mean physical size, Gary, and not inches, has made a difference this evening. They have gotten a lot of, se a lot of second opportunities and a lot of boards because of the physicalness of Mack and Hamilton specifically. Two minutes, we're tied. First overtime. 
Boyle against Hubbard. That would appear to be a mismatch. They're trying to get that fifth foul on Hubbard. Mack comes up short. Mack comes up long. Stoffer. I don't think he wanted to shoot either one of them, Gary. Foul. Stoffer. Rodenberger with a save. And a big save. And a big save. And now Salisbury will say Watch this position is valuable. Faust is guarded now by Sachs. I mean Hubbard by Sachs. Faust by Snyder. One minute to play. We're tied. Overtime. 62 all. And Hubbard takes a little time out to talk to Gary Spangler. What's he? <laughs> I, I don't know what he's asking him, Gary. I think he said, how long have you been officiating? Yeah. See, if that were the official asking something, you know, then I'd say it has to be dumb. Boy, Hubbard really working to free himself up. There's back a back door. door. Foul. Inside. Oh, yes. 25 seconds. Can Southern Lehigh do it again? Well, they certainly got a good shot. Oh, Four, look three. This. No. Rebound. Mack. Inside. He walks. And you know what? He had Hamilton wide open. Wide open underneath. You know Salisbury will get fouled here. There's the foul. That's not the guy you want to foul. Not much choice. Snyder picks up his fourth. Well, you really tip your hat to the freshman, Gary, for one of the three in a critical situation. And then you turn around, he walks on the rebound. And they did have Hamilton wide oh, was open, he open inside. You know, it wasn't that Salisbury's board deserted him, Gary. You know, they still come up with a big rebound off the big miss. And remember, Faust 0 for 2 from the line. He makes the first. Now it'll take a three-point play. Boy, somehow you, he could have been 0 for 87. You and do. that's still the guy you don't want on the line, let me tell you. He is one gutsy performer. This might be for the championship. He got it. Timeout, Southern Lehigh. 66-62, Salisbury. Dick, what do you do now if you're Southern Lehigh? I don't know. This isn't the polo grounds. There aren't any Bobby Thompsons around, Gary. I don't know where you're going to get that four-point miracle. If you're Salisbury, Bill goes back 20 years and comes out in his old standard 1-2-2. It gives you the best coverage on the, on the court. And besides that, Gary, you can fan out. But even a three is not going to bother you that much. Then you tell your kids, hey, let it go through. Let the clock go off. Don't be in a hurry to pick it up. Well, let's see how they got it done here on their last possession. You'll see the back door, the pass from Stauffer. How about this pass to Holt? 66, 62. Well, they're going to pressure, but I just heard Creighton says, bother the ball, but don't foul. Clock's running. You the pressure's there, Gary, only to take time off the clock coming up. 4-3, sacks. No. That's going to do it. There's a foul. Now that could be flagrant. Salisbury is going to be your first half champion. I'll tell you, Colonial League officials can be most proud. They have themselves a very, very respectable basketball league. Stauffer will go to the line. It's all academic. It's a four-point lead with two seconds on the clock. Taylor is going to come into the game. You know, you say it often, and it's become almost a cliche, but it certainly does fit from time to time. You hate to see anybody lose this kind of game. Southern Lehigh tied it up with one second on the clock to send it into overtime. 
after leading almost this entire ball game. Final score, Salisbury 66, Southern Lehigh 62. Dick Tracy, both these teams have to open up second half play tomorrow night. Well, Bill is a buy. That's Bill right. is a buy. Okay. Everything has fallen his way, and maybe rightfully so. Uh, what do you say to each other right now? You say, I'll see you in three and a half weeks. <laughs> because you could have a repeat of what has just been repeated. Whew. 62. Southern Lehigh points on 33 field goals. Two of them were three-pointers. They were 14 out of 18 from the foul line. Their record goes to 14 and 4. And they will leave wondering about a couple of should-have-beens as Southern Lehigh goes down by four. Salisbury 66 on 22 field goals. They had three three-point plays. 19 from th for 31 from the foul line. They certainly could have made it easier on themselves with better foul shooting. 14 yeah. and 2 now is their record. And they are the first half Colonial League champions. And all that means is they start all over again tomorrow night or Friday night. And they'll go down and see who can win the second half. And I'll tell you, Salisbury's talking Valley, Southern Lehigh, maybe Caddy, maybe Wilson. They all have a shot. Maybe Nazareth. Nazareth They're yeah. all playing good basketball. You know, Gary, I'm just trying to go through in my mind. It would take me four hours to go through the Bill Pollock milestones. But here's another half as a milestone to him. And I also believe it's his 38,000th win or something <laughs> like Isn't it amazing? What an amazing job. Well, we do know that 1989, Southern Lehigh won the Colonial League Championship. In 1990, Salisbury won the Colonial League Championship. And who's going to win it in 1991? That story is half a leg on it. That's right. And the story will unfold for you right here on TV4 Sports. Dick Tracy, we thank you very much. We know we won't be seeing you for a while. Get back on the bench and uh, get your work done there. And we'll see you, I'm sure, around playoff time. But for tonight, final score. Salisbury 66, Southern Lehigh 62. Mike Trombett has been our director. We thank our crew for another outstanding job for everybody. I'm Gary Laubach. We'll see you tomorrow night from the Whitehall Gymnasium right here on Cable 4 Sports. Tonight's first half Colonial League Championship game will be replayed on Saturday, January 26th at 8 p.m. Tomorrow night on Cable 4, join us at 6.34 to...